are his. I'm preaching on how overwhelming the thought. How overwhelming the thought. Let's go to Deuteronomy 32, verse 9. And I'm glad they're giving me this, the scriptures on the screen. It helps me to come tremendously. I thank you. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. Lift your hands to heaven. Father, I thank you for the, the promise you're about to reveal to each heart here. We give you all the praise and God's people said, Amen. Keep verse 9 on, please. Don't take it off yet. Verse 9. The Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the Lord of his inheritance. This is a blessed truth so wonderful that no human mind can utter it. It speaks of God himself having an inheritance. And this inheritance is his people. God refuses the world as his inheritance. For one day this world will burn up. Nor heaven as his inheritance. Nor angels as his inheritance. Because none satisfies the heart of God but his people. The Lord's portion is his people not the earth not the heavens not the angels his people let's go to proverbs 8 31 rejoicing in the habitable part of his earth and my delights were with the sons of men my delights, God says, are with the sons of men. Jesus, I give you praise. Don't take that scripture off yet, my dear brother. I want you today to remember... What God said. Let's read that same chapter beginning at verse 27. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he set a compass upon the face of the depth. When he established the clouds above. When he strengthened the fountains of the deep. When he gave to the sea his decree that the water should not pass his command. When he appointed the foundations of the earth, then I was by him as one brought up with him, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him. Then verse 31 says, Rejoicing. We just read why. The Lord was rejoicing. Because in verse 27, go back to it and look at it one more time. He prepared the heavens, I was there. This is the Lord speaking about creation. When he saw the Father creating the world. He said, when he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he set the compass about the face of the deep, I was there. Verse 28, when he established the clouds. When he strengthened the fountains of the deep. Verse 29, when he gave to the sea his decree that the waters should not pass, when he appointed the foundations of the earth. Verse 31, when I was by him, then I was by him. As one brought up with him and I was daily, I was daily his delight before him. Now listen, the Lord is speaking and saying that he was God's delight. God did not delight in his creation. His delight is in his son. And verse 31 says, Rejoicing 
in the habitable part of his earth what he was creating. So I am his delight and I am rejoicing while I am watching him create the world. But my delight were the sons of men. I am his delight and they are my delight. Say I am his delight. Say I am his delight. Not creation. Say not creation. Not the earth. Not the heavens. Not the angels. I am his delight. Now let's go to Psalm 135. Verse 4. God's inheritance is his people. Not the heavens. Not the earth. For the Lord hath chosen Jacob unto himself. And Israel for his peculiar treasure. Treasure. Say I am. His delight. I am. His treasure. Say it again. I am his delight. One more time. I am his delight. I am his I am giving you this truth if I have to pound it in your heart myself. Because your esteem of yourself is not what it should be. The Lord is calling his people his delight and treasure. If you would believe this, it will heal your heart. You'll be free from rejection. You'll be free from the demons that have harassed your mind. You are his delight. You are his treasure. Every human being has six needs. And all of them are met in Jesus. Need number one, love. Need number two, recognition. Without love, you die. From the inside out. Recognition. Nobody wants to be called, hey you. We love our names. Why? Someone recognized us. Number three, security. Everyone has a needing, need for security. That's why we belong. That's why people buy insurance. Join clubs and all the rest of it. Number four, self-esteem. We all need it. We all want to feel that we are worth something. Number five, expression. We can't keep it in. You got to talk about it. And number six, new experiences. This is every human life has those six needs. And the reason... People are crippled from within by rejection because these needs are not met by human beings. There's no such thing today as friends, there's interests. If they can use you, they'll befriend you. I've lived long enough to find that out. But in the church, we find our identity in the Lord. Not in people. Not in our families. In the Lord. You were not born into this world to know your parents. Because one day they'll be gone. It'll only be a memory. You were not born into this world to know your children. Because they grow and they go. You were not born into this world to know your brothers and sisters. Because eventually they forget you and walk away or they have to live their own life and they may call you when they need you or see you at Christmas and holidays. You are born into this world to meet one man, Christ Jesus. And this life is but a test of what he'll trust you in the next. Did you hear me? If you want to be a mature believer, 
begin to live for the next life in this life. Don't waste your time on this life. Begin living for the next life now. Do not get to heaven and find out how much you missed on earth. You begin today. Say, I am his delight. I am his treasure. Let's go to Malachi 3. Malachi 3, verse 16, 17. Then they that fear the Lord speak often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and thought upon his name. Verse 17, and they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts. In that day when I make up my jewels, and I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. Say, I am his jewel. Say it again. One more time. What are you, number one? His delight. Number two, I am his. Number three, I am. You're more important to him than all creation. That's why he numbers your hair. You are more precious to God than all the angels and all his creation. So special are you that the highest manifestation of God's love belongs to you. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor, nor height or depth or any other creature shall be able to separate me from the love of God in Christ Jesus. His love for you is eternal. The mansions on high are prepared for you. The richest gifts of his hand belong to you. John 14, verse 2, John, the Gospel of John. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. The mansions on high are yours. This amazing, wondrous truth, so gloriously shown in Ephesians chapter 1. Verse 17 and 18. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Verse 18. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Paul is praying here that the saints would understand what is the hope of God's calling. Why did he call us? And the riches of his glory and his inheritance in the saints. This is a, an amazing truth. Can you go a little deep? Yes or no? Yes. You can handle it? Yes. When I was young, I did not think much about predestination. I just did not. Today, as I get older, I've had questions for years. Why did God save me? and not my cousins who heard the same gospel. Why did he convict me and not them? I have preached the gospel to my families and they look at me like I'm crazy to believe it. 
I spoke to one of my uncles. The second I said, all have sinned, he got angry. He said, don't call me a sinner. I said, God calls us all sinners. He said, not me. I was giving him scripture and he got angry. How dare you call me a sinner? I'm a good man. That's what he said. I said, uncle, God says all have sinned. He began to curse. He got angry. He said, I'm not a sinner. I'm a good man. I don't hurt anyone. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, and he began to talk about how nice he is to people. He refused the gospel. I had an ant, an ant dying, dying with cancer. My mother went to the hospital in Toronto and began to preach the gospel to her before she died. She said, I don't want God. She was dying. Mama said, you only have a few hours before you're gone. She said, I know. Her body eaten with cancer. She said, please just pray with me. She said, I don't want to. I have no interest, she said, in talking to God. My mom was begging her to receive Jesus. She said, no, I don't want him. And she died. And my mom said her face looked like the devil when she died. Why did she refuse on her deathbed? She was not in the book. Chosen before the foundation of the world. That we should be his. Read Ephesians 1. Chosen in him before the foundation of the world. That we should be blameless before him in love. Having predestined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ. Called. There's only one answer. Call. Why thousands reject the gospel? Millions have rejected the gospel. Family members that you have and friends that you have. They're not in the book. For Jesus said to his disciples, don't rejoice that you have power over devils. Rejoice your names are. Are, not will be, are written in the Lamb's book of life. People do not get saved unless their name is in the book. Read it. Get to know your Bible. I read my Bible three times a year. Do you? Three times a year. I've been doing it for years. I finished Revelation today. I start with Genesis tomorrow. And every four months I go right through the Bible from cover to cover. It's changed my life. I began doing that about 12 years ago. It changed my life. It was Mel and Hickey who challenged me. She said, I challenge you to read your Bible three times a year. And I took the challenge. It changed my life. And all throughout the Bible, I see the elect. The elect. Called to be saints. Romans begins with called to be saints. Corinthians begins with Called to be saints. Called. Jesus said in John, I don't pray for the world. I pray for them. The elect. You, hey, if I say something tonight and the Bible says something else, the Bible is always right. And I'm wrong. If I say anything and the Bible says different, I am wrong. And the Bible is right. God says, I know them who are mine. Those that thou hast given unto me, I have lost none. I will that they whom thou hast given unto me be with me what I am. That they may behold my glory which thou hast given me. I in them and they in me, that they may be made perfect as one. 
one as we are. One with God the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. As you, Father, are in me and I, you and I in them. Incredible. Jesus was crucified before the foundation of the world, Revelation 13 says. When God saw the blood of animals, he, didn't, he did not see the, the blood of animals. He saw the blood of Jesus shed before the foundation of the world in his own heart. He accepted the blood of animals because he saw the blood of his son shed already. Nothing caught God by surprise. He who knows the end from the beginning saw you saying yes. Look, you could not have found God if you tried. He chose you. He found you. It's called predestined. How can a piece of dust find God? He found you. Do you know the miracle it's going to take to transform you into his image? <gasps> look, look, look. We are kept by the power of God. We are kept by the power of God. A few months ago, we had a hurricane in Florida. That hurricane was so powerful that we had to evacuate. The rain so strong, they were literally hitting your windows and coming right through. And that wasn't even, that wasn't even a strong hurricane. Now, if I had a candle that day, holding my candle outside, and that candle stayed lit, I'd say it's a miracle. If I stood with a miracle, with, with a candle in my hand during that hurricane, and that candle stayed lit, I'd, I'd say it's a miracle. There's a candle inside of you. Wait, wait. The storms around you are stronger than any hurricane. Evil forces around you. Corruption within you. But the candle is still shining. Why? He keeps you. We are kept by the power of God. If I had a candle and went into the ocean and I was under the water and it stayed lit, I'd say, boy, that's a miracle. You are in an ocean of wickedness. An ocean of darkness. But the candle is still lit. Why? You are kept by the part of God. You have been chosen to be his. By the power of God. His delight. His, come on. Repeat it. His what? Jewel. His inheritance. And Paul is praying in Ephesians 1 that you might know why he called you. Why? Go back there again. That you might know the riches of the glory. Dear God, I can shout on this one. The riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. In, in, in the saints. Amazing truth. Not only do the saints obtain an inheritance in God, but God secures an inheritance in the saints. How overwhelming the thought that God wants to obtain an inheritance in us. He is our inheritance and we are his. This is the most marvelous truth revealed in the Bible. That God should choose sinners and make them his inheritance. Look, it took less power to create Adam than to save you. Because Adam, when God created Adam from dust, but he stayed dust. And would go back to it. But God said the new creation would become conformed to his image. Less power to create man 
who became dust still and stayed dust and flesh. But think about the power that will take dust and turn it into the image of his son. That's power. That's why we read the exceeding riches of his power to us who do believe. To be conformed to the image of his son takes a bigger miracle than creation, even creating the world. When God created the world, we see his eternal power mentioned in Romans. Creating the world, eternal power. You have to notice those small words in the Bible. When he took Israel out of Egypt, it says by his hand. He creates the world by his eternal power. He takes Israel out of Egypt by his hand. But when he saved us, it was his arm. In the Psalms it says his arm saved us. But to change us into his image, it says the exceeding greatness of his power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. Let me repeat it. The power working in you is the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. And God will not lose. You are his people. You are his body. You are his inheritance. And no man can pluck you out of his hand. No man can come unto me except the Father draws him. And whoever comes, he says, I will in no wise cast him out. Are you listening? Whoever is drawn, is drawn by the Father. And whoever comes to me, he says, I will in no wise cast them out. You are secure. But remember, the preservation of the believer must be accompanied by the perseverance of the believer. No, I don't believe in predetermination. I believe in predestination. Am I saying too much for you? Good. Predestination means God chose me, but I am responsible to obey, to follow. Are you listening? He chose me before the foundations of the world to be his. That literally establishes me in great grace to know that God would place his heart on me then I want to love him with all my heart. I want to follow and serve him. That God should choose sinners, make them his inheritance. But what need has God for us? Does he not have everything? As the sun needs the earth to shine upon, so God needs vessels to fill. Love is no love till you share it. We are the objects of his love. Vessels through which his glory may be reflected. Vessels on which the riches of his grace may be lavished. The Bible calls us not only his portion, his special treasure, but an inheritance. Now, when God calls you his inheritance, number one, it means... It cannot be obtained without death. I think you just caught it. To receive an inheritance, someone must die. Even in the, in the, in the natural. If someone leaves you an inheritance, they cannot give it to you till they're dead. They can write it under promise, but you can't have it till they die. Ma kol al pialba kinti rama. So God's inheritance is secured to him through the death of Jesus. And second, yeah, God. I was in something, but I better just wait till the right moment to say it. And second, an inheritance speaks of property. That is lasting forever. Something that is endless. A property, an inheritance is endless. Third, an inheritance is for possession. It's something you enter into. You enjoy. 
So God's purpose is given to us in the Bible. Psalm 33 verse 12. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And the people whom he hath chosen for his own, for his own inheritance. Why? What's the purpose? First Peter 2 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priest to the holy nation, a peculiar people, that why did God choose you? That ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. To be holy. To show forth the praises of him. You're not an afterthought. You're decreed by him in all eternity. Before the foundation of the world, God fixed his heart on you for himself. Ephesians chapter 1, 13, 14. I'm just giving you the Bible. In whom you also trusted and after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed you were sealed. With the Holy Spirit of promise. And verse 14 says, which is the earnest of our inheritance. Who is our inheritance? The Lord. He's the down payment, the Holy Ghost is the down payment for our inheritance. Until the redemption of the purchased possession, unto the praise of his glory. We're told that the blessed Holy Spirit is the down payment for our inheritance. We're purchased with his possession. Acts 20, 28. Purchased with his blood. Purchased with his blood. Take heed therefore unto yourselves, to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers. To feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his blood. Psalm 94, 14. Look at that one. Psalm 94, 14. Make sure you write this down. For the Lord will not cast off his people, neither will he forsake his inheritance. You cannot be, you cannot be dismissed. You cannot be defeated unless you want to. Unless you consent to be defeated. He is our high priest. You cannot be defeated unless you say yes to defeat. No devil can touch you. Resist him with the word and he'll flee. He can't have you. God will not forsake his inheritance. Tomorrow, you